Hey, what's up, YouTube? This EXO coming at you with another Q&A video today from questions taken directly from the comments of my other Ask EXO video. Let's start out here with Big Boy jc 71s question. He says, My question is about the hardware for building a box and securing the subs. Nails or screws? Certain type? Are nuts and bolts worth using for subs? Well, there's quite a little bit to touch base on on this little question here, so I'm going to start with what you asked for with building a box. No, you don't have to have screws. A lot of people use clamps and wood glue and just tack it together with brad nails. No, not like a hammer and a nail, but like with a compressor and a gun and all that, uh, just to get it together. And you don't necessarily need screws, but personally, I would always go around again and pre-drill some pilot holes and screw it together nice and secure. Some people don't do them all together, but I personally would. But uh, as far as uh, putting your subwoofers into the box, I would never suggest nails. Ever, ever, ever. I mean, the basic function of a subwoofer is to vibrate at very high speeds with an intense amount of force. So if you don't have any threads in there holding the actual woofer down into the box, it's gonna it's gonna come right out, especially if you're using MDF, which tends to strip very easily. So I would say uh, always use screws. Um, and with nuts and bolts, say if your sub's getting up there in, ha in, in weight, I, or how you mount it, I would definitely suggest uh, using nuts and bolts if you're up to like 60, 70, even 100 pound subs like these. Um, I actually went around and took my eight existing holes around the subwoofer and turned it into 16. If you want some recommendations, I like SPACs. They make great stuff, very strong. In fact, one screw will hold up like 800 pounds vertically and like 600 pounds um, horizontally. So that's what I used for all my woofers. You can always use T-nuts, or um, which have little teeth on them, and thread threaded inserts that go on the back portion of your box. So uh, that's basically that. I hope I you know helped you out a little bit. Just don't use nails, man. Unless you're tacking together your box with, with brad nails, that's the only time I would recommend using a nail. The next question we got here is from Parv031. He says, My system doesn't sound as clear and crisp as it did in my previous car. The speakers sound great, but the subs kind of sound crappy. Not clean. I have two MTX 12-inch jackhammers with an Alpine V Power 1000, but I'm using a high-low converter. Could that be why? I've had the three subs for three. I've had the subs for three years. Are they just getting old? So let's go ahead and touch base on something really, really widespread that a lot of people just don't understand. And I'm not saying that you don't understand this, but just hear me out. Um, you can take the exact same system, the exact same everything, something doing like a, a 145 in one car, and put it in another car, and it'll do a 138. It'll sound completely different. It might even sound like crap compared to the other car, like what you just explained to me. So it might be uh, the vehicle that you actually transferred it from. Uh, you didn't really specify what vehicle you have now or what you had before, but I'm assuming it's a whole completely different setup. And I do see here that you mentioned you have the high to low output converter. If it was me, I would go in the back and test the AC voltages just to make sure nothing went awry inside the unit itself because you never know. All, all electronics are subject to failure, so something might have gone wrong inside the, uh, the device itself. So make sure you check that, but always remember that systems are going to sound different from car to car, even if it's the same exact setup, it's going to vary incredibly from one to the next. Just So just remember, it's always going to be different. Coming in with the last question here, it's kind of ambiguous and almost impossible to answer, but that's why I'm touching base on it. It's uh, Nick Knowles 1. He asks, EXO, do you need a port when you have two tens? Uh, well, there's really no possible way to answer that question. It's all about what you want, man. You know, it depends on what you're trying to achieve out of your box, how much space you have for your box. Right now, by the way you worded that, it sounds like you may have a sealed box. And if you're happy with it, man, then I wouldn't change a damn thing. If you wanted to build a ported box, sure, you might gain some output, move a little bit more air. Sealed boxes have their advantages. Ported boxes have their advantages. It's all about what you want, man. I can't possibly answer that question for you. I'm sorry. I know I'm repeating myself, but that's all it comes down to, man, is what you love. That's it.